Look for those oxen there. Come on, prod that leader. Surprise. More of a surprise than you think, General Houston. I'll take those oxen. Death Valley Days. Howdy, folks. I'm the old ranger. It is the year 1836, the year of the Alamo and Goliath. A bad year for Texas' little army of independence. Beaten, but not ready to quit. General Sam Houston kept his army moving just ahead of Santa Ana's victorious Mexicans, waiting for a propitious time and place to strike. But a wet spring has turned the roads into quagmires, and General Houston commandeered all available draft animals to haul the heavy artillery through the mud, including two known as Pamela's Ox. Well, General? All right, men, hold it. You didn't ride out here alone, Mrs. Mann. Well, I'm used to being alone, General, ever since the Battle of Goliad. Yes, ma'am, well, I'm sorrier than I can say about your husband. Didn't my letter reach you? Uh, yes, it did, but not my husband. All my oxen I loaned you last winter. Those are my oxen, aren't they? Well, you see what we're up against here, ma'am. Mud up to our eyeballs. Only oxen could drag a field piece through it. Or pull a plow, Captain. Now, the General promised me my team back in time to make a crop. Well, I'm right sorry, ma'am, but the fact is that I can't possibly spare them for another month. Another month, General? I can't be without them for another week. Well, ma'am, I'm sure you've heard the old saying about possession being nine points of the law. Exactly. So I don't intend to leave here until I've taken possession of them. All right, Captain. Cut the cannon loose. What about it, General? You'll do no such thing. And I'll hear no more talk about it, Mrs. Mann. As you were. Captain, I'm ready to fire again. Madam, can't you understand? If I lose the oxen, I lose the cannon. One is no good without the other. And if I lose them, I lose a the crop. I'm waiting, Captain. I'm going to start counting to three. One, two. All right, all right. Unhitch him. Well, I never thought I'd live to see the day. How was that, Captain? She was bluffing, General. Come to a showdown, she'd have thrown in her cards. Well, if that's true, why don't you ride after the lady and bring the critters back? Oh. I'm sorry, General, I spoke out of turn. Yes, sir, and the problem's all yours, Captain. Because you're going to follow her and bring those cattle back. General, I don't know anything about handling women. Private Riggs, here's your man. Well, he's forgotten more about women I'll ever know. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. But, uh... You're going to catch more flies with sugar than you are with vinegar. How's that? Yeah. You got to sweet talk a woman. You got to sweet talk a woman like that. <laughs> Why not? A woman's a woman, Captain. Well, now that sounds just fine. Between the Captain's tough talk and your sweet talk, Private, you ought to have those animals back by tomorrow night. Now have Sims guard the cannon, and you and Riggs prepare to leave immediately. And that's an order. Well, I reckon if you can't reason a wench into it, Captain, I'm gonna <laughs> plumb romance her into it. I might even pick myself up a little promotion. <laughs> or a knife in the ribs from that Mrs. Man. <laughs>
He must have driven him upstream. <laughs> she knows he's full of that. Um, come on, boy. <laughs> Yonder they went. Yeah. Well, if it gets any darker, we'll lose her for sure. She must be figured on traveling all night. Postpackers? Yeah. They passed her before she did, though. Army patrol, maybe. Well, that's too far south for that. Besides, they're not even Army-style horseshoes. I guess that leads but one thing, renegades, yeah. Strange. Why would a woman build a fire and then go off and leave it? Everything's strange about a woman, Captain. Unless you savvy him. <laughs> That's rule one. Captain, don't do it. Well, you startled us. I meant to. I thought I'd be followed. Didn't think Sam Houston would give up that easy. Were your animals? Up the hill in the rocks. You see, I just built this fire to keep the riffraff away from my camp. Anybody comes looking for my oxen, I hear them. That way I surprise them. Uh, what are you gentlemen up to? Up to? We just follow along, see you got home all right. You came after my animals and you know it. Now you just listen to me. I've done my share already in this war. I gave a husband. I loaned a yoke of oxen to the army. But I'm not going to let my children stop because General Sam Houston. Oh, man. Looks like you dropped something. Now, believe me, Mrs. Mann, if we wanted to take those oxen, you couldn't stop us. Then what are you doing here? General Houston sent us to give you safe conduct. He admired your spunk. He did. Oh, well, yes. Uh, you know what he said? No. He said that woman is a credit to the Republic of Texas. Isn't that nice? You know what you can do for me, Captain? You can ride right back and thank him. Or to leave you here unprotected? You probably didn't know there are a lot of renegades in this area. Oh, now, I've heard about those renegades, but I haven't seen many of them. The closest I've seen are soldiers stealing livestock. Well, you haven't traveled with oxen, ma'am. You and them animals would make a rich prize. Oh, now, Captain. Now, who'd want a poor widow like me? Well, nobody in his right mind. But they might pick you up and carry you off before they know what they caught. Captain didn't mean that, ma'am. He's, uh, he's just kind of vexed that you won't let us help you. You see, uh, we seen horse tracks back yonder. <laughs> Might be some bad fellas ranging around these hills looking for a pretty girl to steal. I've seen those tracks. Probably Texas deserters. I resent that, ma'am. Everyone in our army is a volunteer. And they've stuck through the fires of Hades. Well, now, along with all the heroes, there's probably a lot of trash in that army. Now, since I've declined the General's kind offer of assistance, you'll probably be wanting to start right back. Well, now, I bet you wouldn't want to send us back without so much as a cup of coffee. Hard as we rode? All right. You can come along, then. Oh, 
Hey, now looky there, Fergus. It's a campfire, all right. The question is, is whose campfire is it? Mexicans or Texans? Maybe it's some honest traders like ourselves. <laughs> yeah. We got coffee and we got salt. And I ain't gonna pay much for goods like that. No, if we was bringing livestock, a hundred a head for anything with four legs hanging down from the corners. <laughs> hey, maybe they got livestock, Fergus. Well, why don't you ride down there and find out and get your head blowed off? Well, how else are we gonna find out? We gonna, gonna wait till morning. Nice and quiet, and we're gonna ride down there and hit them fast. Get away fast. That's how we stay in business as long as this here war lasts. All right, the rest of you fellas spread yourselves out. We don't want no trading party coyoting up on us in the dark. Only have the one cup, so you'll have to take turns. Well, I'll just uh, have a look around, see if any more riffraff has been drawn into your trap. <laughs> There's a man, you know, he's a good soldier. But uh, he don't know anything more about women little old snake knows about you. And you do? Well, let's just say I ain't totally unexperienced. <laughs> well, now, Mr. Riggs, just what has your experience taught you about us women? Oh, like the way you all hone up with soft things and uh, like the way you all like perfume. What else, Mr. Riggs? What's your first name, Mrs. Mann? Uh, Pamela. Pamela. You know, a woman like you, Pamela, she could have any man in Texas. Maybe I wouldn't want any man in Texas. Oh, yes, you would. You're the prettiest woman I ever seed. Listen, Pamela, when this war's over, I'm coming back after you. Oh, now, you don't mean that, Mr. Riggs. I do, I surely do. But you know, this war, it's got to be won first. I know. And one thing is going to win it. That's oxen. You, you'd want to take my oxen? Would you give them to me? If I promise to bring them back and stay? No. <laughs> I just wanted to see how a man who understands women goes about tricking one. So you just have fun, huh? Well, you let well, go no, of me. I'm gonna have some let fun. Let go of me. Help me. Stop it. Let go. Please. Let go of me. Uh -uh. Hey, when she pulled a gun on me, Captain. Did it, eh? <laughs> Now, you get back to that bivouac. Could mean a court-martial. I'm sorry about that, ma'am. I never thought he'd try to pull a thing like that. Well, if you hadn't forced your so-called protection on me, it would never have happened. Well, whether you like our protection or not, my orders are to see you safely to your farm. I suppose I can survive another artilleryman.
like you better that way. With a spoon in your hand rather than a gun. I like myself better this way, Captain. But in a man's country, a woman's got to play a man's part. Well, I must say you play to perfection. Well, how long do you think I'd last mincing around like a silly woman? Some worthless doings of a man would take over my farm in a month. Who do you think will take it over if we lose this war? You know, they outnumber us four to one. They're better armed. But what artillery we have, we can't move for lack of draft animals. Such as oxen? Such as oxen. <laughs> oh, Captain, why don't you come right out and say it? You didn't follow me to give me safe conduct. You wanted my animals. All right. Now, you know it, and I know it. I also know you can't eat cannons, Captain. What do you mean? Well, what I mean is, an army can't fight on an empty stomach. Now, I raise food. So who's to say which is the better patriot? The farmer or the soldier? Well, you've got a point there, I suppose. But when the Alamo fell, Travis Garrison had 20 bushels of corn left, but no gunpowder. It's a hard problem, Captain. But I'm glad it's been settled between us. Now, go on. Eat it. You'll feel better. I, I wish I could reconcile the way you seem to be with what you are. Well, now, most women are a mystery. You know that, Captain. I'll get you some coffee. Hey, you hear that? Ooh, I hear something. Under he is. All right, now you hold it right there, fella. All right, take it easy. Let me say my piece. Mister, you better start making your piece. You keep coming. Who be you? Private Riggs. You deserted? I wouldn't say that. More of a traitor like. Well, what do you trade? Most everything. I trade best with my hands down. All right, you put your hands down. Where's your horse at? Left him down the hill. What do you trade? Livestock. Beef cattle? Two oxen. And two horses. You talking about that bunch up there on the hill? We done got them in the bag. Oh, well, there's a hole in that bag. They ain't anywhere near that fire, if that's what you've seen. Where they at? That's what I'm trading. Where they're at and how many of them? How much? Hundred dollars? Fifty, if we get them. Seventy-five. We'll get them. Camp's on the hill. We'll walk up. Barnes won't catch on till it's too late. Travis, you stay here with the horses. It's Riggs and some other men. I don't know what they're after. They're after my oxen. Devil with your oxen. You're more important. Get down.
Captain? It's me, Riggs. Right over here, Private. See the rigs. Man, Pamela, I, uh, I've been thinking about those oxen of yours. Uh, it's even wrong for me to ask for them. I hadn't thought about the matter of the food for the army. Oh, now listen, Captain. Uh, Stephen. Stephen, I feel kind of foolish saying this, but after all, first things come first, and, and the first thing is to win the war, isn't it? So I want you to take those oxen back with you. Oh, no. No, absolutely not, Mrs. Mann. Uh, how do you think I would feel knowing you were having to work the earth with your bare hands? You know? Well, no, it isn't going to be quite that bad. You see, there are some neighbors. They have oxen, and well, I could borrow them. Are you sure? I'll make out till the war's over. What about after that? I don't make any plans anymore. No, I guess soldiers can't make any plans. Well, you're just as much a soldier in this war, Mrs. Mann, as I am. Thank you, Captain. History doesn't record whether Pamela Mann's oxen took part in the Battle of San Jacinto a few weeks later, the battle which won the war for Texas. But Pamela and General Houston, now President Houston, did become friends. So much so that when her son was married some years later, Sam Houston was best man at the wedding. 